I'd like to share with you a story uh, that, uh, about something that happened to me a little while back uh, that has something to do with uh, traveling with intent and how you treat people and the strange things that happen uh, when, when you treat the, the world in a certain way. And I have to confess that uh, this particular technique I borrowed from a friend called Mark Gold and uh, his 100 Friends Project and I urge you to check it out here on my website. Uh, there's a story about Mark and his 100 Friends Project. As a matter of fact, he's got more like a million friends because his uh, philosophy seems to be when in doubt, make a friend and uh, be friends with everyone and then who knows what leads from there. Anyway, in this particular story, I was in Phnom Penh, which is the capital of Cambodia. And uh, I was visiting an orphanage called the Center for Children's Happiness, which is just about the greatest place I've ever been on my travels because these kids are so amazingly happy. There's about 150 kids there and they are the real deal. And the reason they are so happy is because they've all been rescued from a life in the town dump. Uh, Stung Manche is the name of the dump. It's more like a toxic waste site. It's on fire 24 hours a day. People throw everything in there. Uh, there's no rules, I guess, in a place like Cambodia. Uh, you can smell it. You can see it from miles away. It's a horrible place. And uh, there are actually thousands of people living in there, including several hundred children. Uh, absolutely destitute. Uh, when the garbage trucks pull up, they eat the garbage right off the truck. And they've made houses out of uh, cardboard and tin. And uh, they live in the garbage. And, and uh, I made several visits there, and uh, as a matter of fact, you'll be able to see some of that in an upcoming documentary that I'll have available on the site soon. And I went there with uh, one of the children from the Center for Children's Happiness. Uh, we borrowed the orphanage's motorbike, which I didn't find out till we were halfway to the dump had no brakes, front or back. <laughs> but we managed to make it alive to uh, the orphanage. And um, I walked around and did all my filming, and uh, then I looked at my watch and said, i got to be back downtown by 6 p.m. because I have a really important uh, dinner engagement tonight with some people from the embassy that my wife wants to meet, and i got to get all cleaned up. And man, I can tell you, after walking around the garbage dump for an hour, I really stank. So um, we get back to the motorbike, and my 14-year-old guide from uh, the uh, orphanage said, uh, Mr. Mike, we have a problem. Okay, well, what's that? No, no, no worries. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it on the way back. Oh, no, uh, can, can go nowhere. <laughs> well, we have to go somewhere because it's 20 minutes and i got to be downtown, uh, so we got to get on the bike and go. Well, cannot do. A bike does not start. Uh, well, we'll push start it. Uh, you know, uh, you get behind and, and, and I'll hold the, uh, the handlebars and we'll push. we got to get going. Come on. No, uh... Lost keys in garbage dump. You lost the keys? There's 7,000 acres of garbage here. I felt like telling him, go look for it, but i got to be downtown in 20 minutes. What do we do now? Um, I know what. Uh, when in doubt, says Mark Gold, make a friend. So uh, I said to my 14-year-old guide, well, the first person that comes by on another motorbike, you speak Cambodian, go over and tell them that there's this great, big, hulking, stupid American over here <laughs> with no way of getting downtown. And uh, would it be possible for you to take him on your motorbike all the way downtown? And by the way, he's only got two dollars on him. Will that do? So, as a matter of fact, the very first person who came by, we did that. And uh, the Cambodian gentleman on his little 50cc putt-putt started laughing his head off and signaled, get on the back and drove me all the way to Phnom Penh and uh, didn't have a clue who I was. Now, I just felt a huge sense of exhilaration being on the back of a motorcycle with a complete stranger in a strange country. I have no idea where I was and all I knew is that we were heading back to the city. And I had a good look around uh, as, as we went by and all this new stuff that I'd never seen before. There's the National Stadium, oh, there's the Royal Palace. And as a matter of fact, we went into the heart of the city and I noticed that we were going out the other side again. I didn't really know where my hotel was and I hadn't told the guy. I just said downtown. So I said, oh, stop, wait a minute. Um, turn around and go back and, and let's look for my hotel. You see that watch over there, Pagoda? Get close to that and I think I can find my way back. Well, 
Long and short, we made a lot of stops, asked a lot of directions, and I finally made it back uh, to my hotel uh, with about a minute to spare. And uh, all I had was the $2. So I gave it to the guy, and he had a good laugh, and the guy at my hotel had a good laugh, we all had a good laugh. And I walked upstairs, and my wife said to me, Where have you been? You stink. <laughs> what in doubt, no matter where you are, make sure to do one thing. Make friends, and uh, it'll go a long way, and sometimes uh, you even get a good story out of it.